The upper limb has six categories of muscles, the pectoral region, shoulder, upper arm, anterior forearm, posterior forearm, and hand. In this video, we will discuss the posterior forearm, which is separated from the anterior compartment by the interosseous membrane between the ulna and the radius. The posterior compartment muscles of the forearm produce extension at the wrist and fingers, and are hence also known as the extensor muscles. The posterior compartment of the forearm has two layers, deep and superficial. These two layers are separated by connective tissue. There are seven superficial muscles and five deep muscles. Let's cover the seven superficial muscles first. Four of the seven muscles share a common tendinous origin at the lateral epicondyle. Extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digiti minimi, and extensor carpi radialis brevis. The extensor digitorum is the main finger extensor. Its tendon runs to the distal forearm and splits into four, each end inserting into the extensor hood of a finger. The extensor digitorum extends these four fingers at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. The extensor carpi ulnaris originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and attaches to the base of metacarpal 5. It causes extension and adduction of the wrist. The extensor digiti minimi originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Sometimes it can be fused with the extensor digitorum muscle. The extensor digiti minimi attaches, together with the extensor digitorum tendon, into the extensor hood of the little finger. The extensor digiti minimi extends the pinky and helps extend the wrist. Extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis extend and abduct the wrist. They are both on the lateral side of the posterior forearm. The extensor carpi radialis longus originates from the supracondylar ridge, while the extensor carpi radialis brevis originates from the lateral epicondyle. Their tendons attach to metacarpal bones two and three. The brachioradialis originates from the proximal lateral supracondylar ridge. It then attaches to the distal end of the radius, just before the radial styloid process. The brachioradialis has an origin characteristic of an extensor, but it lets you bend your elbow, so it's actually a flexor. The anconius is on the elbow joint's posterior aspect. It extends and rotates the elbow and rotates the forearm. Its fibers blend with those of the triceps brachii, such that these two muscles can be indistinguishable. The anconius originates from the lateral epicondyle and attaches to the posterior and lateral part of the olecranon. The anconius extends the elbow joint and abducts the ulna during forearm pronation. Now let's discuss the five deep muscles. The supinator, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, and extensor indices. With the exception of the supinator, the deep muscles create motion in the thumb and index finger. The supinator's two heads lie on the floor of the cubital fossa. One head originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, while the other originates from the posterior surface of the ulna. They both insert into the posterior surface of the radius. The supinator acts to supinate the forearm. The abductor pollicis longus originates from the interosseous membrane and the adjacent posterior surfaces of the ulna and the radius. The abductor pollicis longus attaches to the lateral side of the base of metacarpal 1 and abducts the thumb. The extensor pollicis brevis originates from the posterior surface of the radius and interosseous membrane and attaches to the base of the thumb's proximal phalanx. It extends at the thumb's metacarpophalangeal and carpometacarpal joints. Extensor pollicis longus originates from the posterior surface of the ulna and interosseous membrane and attaches to the thumb's distal phalanx. Its tendon travels medially to the dorsal tubercle at the wrist. The extensor pollicis longus extends all of the thumb's joints, carpometacarpal, metacarpophalangeal, and interphalangeal. Extensor indices originates from the posterior surface of the ulna and the interosseous membrane. It attaches to the extensor hood of the index finger and allows it to be independent from other fingers during extension. Studying anatomy can be hard, but it doesn't have to be. Check out our sponsor, KenHub. They have thousands of high-quality images, hundreds of articles and quizzes, and hundreds of hours of video material. Their website is optimized to make learning fun and easy. For example, video speed is adjustable, and they have transcripts. When doing their quizzes, KenHub helps keep track of your weak spots so you know what to review before your exam.